something I really appreciate about this guy, even though I disagree with him on almost everything, but uh, something I appreciate about this guy is that he's not shoving all gay people, lesbians, bisexuals, transgender people into the category of queer. There are many in the queer community who push forth, angrily sometimes, the notion that all LGBT people are under the umbrella of queer. And they get angry when people try to differentiate between them. Personally, I hate the word. It was always a slur in the past, just like uh, the F word uh, against gay people. I don't feel like reclaiming it. It's not necessary to reclaim. But this guy acknowledges that there are a lot of normal people out there who don't want to dismantle all the systems that make up society, that make up this country. He acknowledges that queer is not merely being who and what you are, that it's ideological in nature. If you are being gay, being gay, and you're not also doing crime, then personally, I am not going to clock you as queer. Good. You can identify however you want, but personally, I understand queer to have a necessary implication that you are in some meaningful way standing in opposition to the status quo. Okay, but what happens when the status quo really isn't necessarily that bad? When we've made so many improvements over time that the status quo really isn't that bad. Now, there are some things to work on, but some of what the queer community tries to work on is just like, so you're just trying to destroy society. The systems that make up society, you're trying to dismantle them rather than reduce their negative effects. You want to just dismantle them. And I, I, I think that's fucking nuts. I'm sorry. To the prevailing power structures in our capitalist, white supremacist, patriarchal society. And yeah, we do have leftovers of those things, but they're mostly harmless now. If you're not doing crime, like even a little bit, then I don't know how you are meaningfully doing that. I'm not, but I'm 50. I am somewhat at peace with the establishment to a certain degree. I have been thinking about this a lot lately because I live in Seattle. And as you may or may not have heard, a few weeks ago, the Seattle Police Department and the Liquor Control Board conducted a targeted joint raid of a number of well-known gay bars and clubs here on Capitol Hill. It's horrible what happened. I'm most definitely against the state telling people how to live. Something I was thinking about is like a recent video I made where, you know, how in the 90s, things can get pretty steamy at these bars. People groping strangers and the whole works. The more that feminist thought started making its way into these places, and the more that women would hang out at these places, the less that was seen. The less that uh, even, you know, kissing was seen. The way Seattle is now, you're not even supposed to kiss if there's been alcohol. So a bar could get raided over people kissing. It's, it's ridiculous. It was very clearly targeted. It was very clearly homophobic. It was incredibly invasive. It was entirely inexcusable. Yeah, but what are we supposed to do about it? Have some more protests? Burn some more property? Have a bunch of vandalism? Get an even worse reputation by the general public? Yeah, I'm sure that'll help. Maybe you should be thinking about how we can get a better reputation. And since then, personally, I've been kind of holding my breath, waiting to see if the gay community in this city was gonna show up, if they were gonna turn out. And disappointingly, by and large, they really have not. There have been critical statements made by high profile figures in the community. The bars and clubs that were targeted banded together to release a joint statement and list of demands for the Seattle Police Department and the Liquor Control Board. That may not be much, but it's better than rioting and burning and vandalizing. And let me be even more clear. At the Liquor and Cannabis Board meeting, they were swarmed by activists. It was, a, it was a very fiery meeting, and the demands that were being made were reasonable. But that's kind of been it. No one's been in the streets. I guarantee you that not a single member of the Seattle Police Department has lost even a minute of sleep over the way that they conducted themselves. And it's just... We don't know that. Maybe they do lose sleep over it. Maybe they do feel a little bit disturbed by it because of the laws that they're expected to enforce. Some of these laws are stupid. We should probably address these laws instead of, you know, having riots and, 
and protesting and, and stuff that isn't really going to do anything. It's not going to get more people on our side, that's for sure. Disappointing. And what I think that lack of response really highlights for me is that the majority, it seems, of the gay community in Seattle is content to not challenge these status quo power structures because they have let themselves be co-opted by them. I suppose. Because being gay itself in this city has, by and large, been co-opted. There are so many people who are just content to lean in to rainbow capitalism, who want to enjoy the comfort and power that they now have access to via those status quo systems without critically examining or acknowledging the fact that those systems are the very same systems that were persecuting and oppressing them in the past. Well, what do you know? We have progress. You don't have to destroy everything in order to get progress. Wow, what a concept. When they were growing up or wherever they lived before they moved to Seattle, they don't want to acknowledge that those same power structures are still persecuting people here in this city right now, just different people. It's disappointing. There are so many gay people in this city who will walk past a whole block of unhoused folks under constant 24 hour surveillance by the police who are struggling to meet basic material needs. They'll walk past a whole block of people like this and then go into like a five star hotel bar and commiserate with their friends about how oppressed they were growing up and how that's still affecting them today. But what are they supposed to do when they walk past them? Just give them money or something? Uh, give give them a place to stay, even though they it, it's likely that they're drug addicted? I mean, you go past these areas that, that, that he's talking about, and you find needles all over the place. You know, police may be watching uh, some of these areas, but they're not doing anything about it, the activity. So, you know... If if someone wanted to get out of those situations, they, they might have a hard time because of, of drug addiction, you know? So there's, there's a lot of things that need to be addressed, but what are these rich people supposed to do that are walking past these areas? What are they supposed to do? Well, they're, they're mainly going to worry about walking past these areas, about some, about some crime happening. What are, what are these people who are methed out going to do? And that's fine. Maybe that's valid. Maybe they need to do that but then they'll leave that bar and walk past that same block of people and go into their $3,000 a month one bedroom and not think twice about it. Who knows, they might think about it a lot, but there's really not anything they can do about it. And it's just frustrating. It's frustrating, it's disappointing. I don't really have a good takeaway from this video, and I think this is a little more rambling than my videos usually are. I guess my takeaway is this. If you are one of those people who is calling yourself queer but who is not also doing crime, start, please. Well, thankfully, I don't label myself as queer, so that won't be a problem. Have a nice day.